Hey, hey, hey everyone, Tankenstein here in this video. I've got your gameplay for the M551-76. This is a currently ranked 4 battle rating 6.7 light tank in the American Ground Forces tech tree and comes as the top level reward for the Airborne General Battle Pass event. Now that being said, this vehicle is very, very unique in that it's not really unique, but kind of is at the same time. It's more or less kind of a mishmash of parts. So this is the M551, as you can see, it's got the same chassis, pretty much, same hull, all that except of course it has a 76 millimeter cannon in place of where it's normally 152 millimeter gun slash missile launcher would normally be so what this means is that rather than being 8.0 or 8.3 br whatever the heck that was it is now 6.7 br and of course shares more or less about the same type of ammunition as what you'd get on the m41 a1 which coincidentally has the same exact armor thickness as the M551 in every way. Now the difference here is that this is aluminium armor, whereas the M41 has steel armor, which means that the steel armor, believe it or not, it does factor into it, and it does mean that the M4B1A1 is going to be a little bit better protected, especially against things like HMGs and auto cannons. Now I said if I haven't already mentioned it, this does have a very nice stabilizer. It is very fast. It's got around a 20 to 1 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio, which at this BR is pretty good. 69 kilometer per our top speed, excellent turret traverse rate, pretty good reload rate, and a decent enough vertical guidance. And if you guys really want to see, look here, you can see I'm getting about a 6.8 second reload rate. And with the turret traverse, I'm getting 34 degrees per second. So these stats, if you ever get like a test drive from Gaijin, they are not really accurate. Those are just the base stats, unmodified by crew. You have to actually look at your crew in order to get the real stats. Now, that being said, let's get into a few matches, see what we could do with this thing. I want to make this as accurate as possible so you guys can know whether you're looking to purchase battle pass whether you're looking to purchase this on the marketplace whether or not this is a good vehicle i want this to be as bias free as possible so that said let's get into a few matches and see what we can do now i've taken this thing out in a few fights thus far and i don't really know if the cannon feels like it's got like a 1250 meter per second muzzle velocity and if it does it feels like the uh, velocity drop is substantial over a relatively short amount of time. I mean, like, it's it's pretty damn wild. So we actually have a vehicle right there. I'm going to see if I can not get that kill. Why would it matter if I get that kill? I don't want that kill. Why should I want the kill? But I should get it right now. Nope, I guess I can't. So one of the big problems with the uh, APDS, especially, like, APDS that's this small is the fact that, unfortunately... Very nice. We have ourselves a loader hit. Go back up. And I'm not going to die, because I'm the king of not dying. Okay, I'm not actually the king of not dying. However, uh, one of the big problems with this vehicle, ultimately, is just going to be the fact that, if I haven't already mentioned it, it's uh, APDS is just not very uh, sizable might be a way to put it so unfortunately being that it just doesn't really have very big APDS being that APDS is already a sub caliber shell when it actually goes through an enemy a lot of the time you're not going to get a kill you might get an assist which again kind of sucks but if you're nearby a base you can reload which by the way guys the uh, this vehicle only has a total of 23 shells that I can carry at max, which really, really sucks, at least in my opinion. Okay, we uh, just hit that IS-2 one more time. Didn't do Jack Diddley. And that's another thing that you're going to probably experience with this, is that if it doesn't go through, sometimes it'll be due to something like Shell Shatter, which is uh, a disappointment all its own. I mean, it's a very unique level of disappointment because it's like you hit him, you hit the enemy, however, uh, you don't do jack diddly to him. Looks like this guy might have a messed up turret. I'm not entirely sure. We have ourselves a kill. What I'm going to do to distract this IS-2, I'm going to go dump those smoke grenades over there. Rescout him. Now I'm going to go over. Now one of the big problems with this vehicle um, is, is really just the fact that, uh, unfortunately... Unfortunately, this vehicle has a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, 
I forget exactly what it has, but basically, this vehicle is by no means perfect, right? Like, you're gonna have limited armor, uh, definitely, like, right now, I'm, I'm starting to experience... Ooh, did I actually hit him with my cannon? Wouldn't really matter so much. But this vehicle is just very limited in many ways. Now, this is going to be a challenge. Now, if I had APF SDS, or uh, Heat FS, rather, that'd be a another thing entirely. I'm not going to try to fight him. Not at least from there. That would be stupid. You know what? I'm going to throw out a smoke shell over here. Try to draw his attention away. Now, I'm going to go re-equip APDS. Pull over here. Hopefully, he doesn't notice. And he did not notice. He did not fall for my ruse entirely. However, not too big of a deal. We have ourselves a kill. Can't complain anytime that you kill a mouse in a match. It's a good thing. Plus, my engine was already pretty much on the verge of destruction. Which, by the way, Gaijin, if you aren't already planning on doing this, make it so that, like, if an engine or something is yellow, at least allow you to repair it at a base. It's ridiculous when you can't repair something back to full, and you have to let it go to either red or black in order to repair it. It's just such a stupid mechanic. Ugh, don't you love to see it? That's also one of the, the other real great things about this vehicle, is that it is a scout, right? Like, when you're in a light tank, you have the power to scout enemies, and it's just, well, outside of rank 1 vehicles. And that power is just so incredibly useful. Um, on a team, you know, I mean, it's such a team-based thing that you could do. I thought I just saw someone over there. It's such a thing that you could do when you're on a team that can just help you win. I've got three assists, I think pretty much all from scouting, which is just wonderful. And again, it's one of the, the strengths of this vehicle. So, with that last match out of the way, uh, you know, it wasn't some flashy, crazy, like, six-kill match from, like, a safe distance or something, or, like, a ten-kill match, whatever. It was just a match where, like I said in the intro, I wanted to show you guys basically what this vehicle is capable of. I got a few assists from damage, scouting, I got a few kills, I got a zone cap that you guys didn't see, even beat a mouse. Now that being said, when it comes to this vehicle, uh, there are a few things that I really like and a few things that, uh, well, I dislike. So let's go over those now. Some strengths and weaknesses. And let's get into the strengths first. First, I really like the stabilizer. That is fantastic. Second, I like the uh, the fact that we have very good turret traverse. So this has, again, around, what, like 34 degrees of turret traverse per second, which is fantastic at this BR, and that's not with an expert crew. 28, I think, like, fully stock, if that makes any sense, like, without crewing this vehicle. So it's just very nice. Uh, next up, we have the cannon. While the cannon does not have excellent post-pen damage, which is understandable when it comes to a uh, an APDS shell, subcaliber shell, it does get through very, very well. 300 meters, millimeters of, uh, of armor pen, which is fantastic. Okay, we have ourselves a few Germans over there. Germans are not typically what you want to see. However, let's go ahead and hope that I'm not gonna die here. We have ourselves an assist kind of go around here hope that we can get whatever um but like i said post pen damage not fantastic otherwise this vehicle is that an enemy that's not an enemy uh this vehicle does have a very nice cannon just in that it can kind of get you in the door if that makes any level of sense okay we have ourselves a track hit against an is2 uh, one of the things actually I'm noticing about this vehicle is that it has a very bad rate of elevation for its cannon, which sucks. Uh, just overall. But as you can see, I've already got three assists and a base cap. So this vehicle, I feel like, is going to be an assist magnet. If you guys don't mind that, that's really, really good. Um, because with this vehicle, again, via scouting, via whatever else... You're going to be able to get into your uh, preferred CAS vehicle very easily with this vehicle. Now, again, as you saw in the last match, I got a few kills fairly easily. So that's not going to be out of the question either. But uh, let's go over some of the weaknesses, or uh, I guess the final strength here. When it comes down to it, it does have very good maneuverability. Not absolutely fantastic, but very good. Uh, it's definitely something where I don't feel like you're going to be wanting with this. 
which is a good feeling because you know if you've ever been in a slow light tank cough cough the retell uh you really don't it's a very unpleasant experience you know this vehicle is not that way thankfully uh, but let's go into some of the weaknesses here now armor is really bad that could be a, a plus or a minus with this simply because the um, armor like i said it's worse than on the m41 even though it's got the same thickness and that comes down to armor composition however uh you know if enemies overpen you that could be a very good thing for you okay got the cannon breach probably gonna get another assist i was thinking about shooting right through the back I'm gonna still do that just so he can stop moving kind of want to hide here Ugh, ugly but now i know that I mean, i'm gonna have to shoot up there if i can help it probably not someone's gonna die and we have ourselves an assist just like that but like i said post pen damage is a bit minimal um also another big problem with this vehicle is going to be its lack of total shells it's not like a big big problem but it does suck uh that is definitely noticeable it is something that uh you know, unfortunately, if you are somebody who likes to go into a match with a few more shells than, than other people, this only has a 23 shell maximum. You know, also, again, you don't get the option of having Heat FS. You only have APDS, and of course, Solid Shot as well, but I'd rather have the APDS any day of the week over the Solid Shot. Oof, very lucky. That was able to get that kill. Woo! Sometimes just firing off in the darkness can help. Now, that being said, my fi my first impressions of this vehicle. What do I think after playing a few matches in it and whatever else? I actually like it. You know, 6.7 BR. Some might say that it's a bit overpowered, but I feel like the 76 millimeter APDS on this thing are going to be it's going to be the main thing that limits it you know i mean like on some instances some on one hand when you have a vehicle like the btr when you have a vehicle like the Rattel, something where it's like kind of a a longer thinner vehicle and you can shoot it right from the front you're probably going to get a one-shot kill just because of how the apds is and and all that um sometimes you can get lucky like that too but on occasion you know i mean like or more often than not you're gonna have to get multiple hits against the enemy in order to get a kill and that's where it really starts floundering a bit very nice we have ourselves a few things here i'm guessing that guy's gonna know where i am hoping not yes he does however he is dead and this guy doesn't know where i am let's see if we can get ourselves a kill versus that martyr one shot kill we also have a tiger over there Gonna try to shoot through the turret. Not gonna be able to get a one-shot. I got a one-shot kill. Oh, that was a T-44. My apologies. I made a little oopsie. We have another assist. Wow. Okay. We have a... What's going on here? We're having a lot of good luck. Six kills, two assists. This is the match I've been wanting. Now, whether or not we actually are able to kind of sustain this success, that's something else entirely. However none too shibby dibby dabby can't complain all too much so buddy okay let's back up here i do not want to be here for uh, forever now again when it comes to this vehicle i mean like for doing that for being kind of like a a strong flanker for being ooh, an is3 i was able to do that too for being a strong flanker for being something that um in my opinion is just a very good overall uh I, i'm not even thinking right here i don't think i'm gonna be able to get this kill i mean i can hope i can i got a kill versus an is3 gosh darn man okay this is a very good vehicle who am i kidding whoa 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 nelly whoa nelly whoa -ho -ho -ho. nelly nelly Okay, and there's the APDS in all of its glory. Not doing what I want it to do. Not too big of a deal. Let's see if I can miss that. Not a big deal. Seven kills, two assists. Not too bad. We're actually really close to a, uh, a nuke here. Don't think I'm going to get it, though. 
just because of how this game is. Not a big deal, though. Got 2,159 points. Not too shabby. So, overall, yeah. I mean, I like this vehicle. It has mediocre uh, armor, but it's pretty damn good in the right circumstances. Especially when you're able to flank like that. So with that last match out of the way, I almost actually had a nuke by the very end of it after I spawned into uh, the M26 T99, I think it was. Anywho, eh, it looks like we have something over here. But that being said, let's just kind of finish this up. Hopefully I can kind of tell you guys exactly how I feel about this vehicle. It doesn't really matter how well we do in this match. It will be what it is. Now that said, do I recommend this vehicle? Do I think it's good? Do I think that it needs a BR increase? Let's tackle all of that. So, one, yeah. I mean, I actually really, really like this vehicle. Uh, I'm kind of surprised by how much I do like it. Now, like I said, it does have some severe flaws. Like, really, really big flaws. Namely in the fact that its APDS has mediocre post-pen damage. And, um, you know, this also has minimal armor. But... Okay, we have an enemy way over there. And he is... Uh, doing something. Can I get that kill? Very nice, I can. I was very lucky on my part because he just simply didn't shoot me when he could have or should have. Anyways, so this vehicle is very powerful. Uh, it's got a very nice cannon. It's a bit small for a subcaliber shell. I mean, like, these are... Oh, wow, 2.81 kilograms per shot for APDS isn't all that bad. So that's it's a little bit better. Ooh, that's, that was ugly. It's a little bit better than I expected, but it's still not very good. Um, you know, again, like, you're pretty much going to have to know the weaknesses, like, weak spots of enemies or, like, where exactly to shoot, really in order to maximize the effectiveness of these things. It looks like we have a Panzer Bethelsfalken 6P somewhere. So let's go ahead and hope I don't die to him. Okay, we have a Waffentrager. Had a Waffentrager. So, do I think that this thing should see a BR increase? Yes. Kind of. Maybe, maybe, maybe to 7.0 BR. I don't think any higher than that. Uh, this vehicle is very, very good. Don't get me wrong. However... Um, we have to remember, again, this is the same shell, like, doesn't have heat FS, doesn't have anything like that. It's this, more or less kind of the same as what we see in the M41. You know, not, not that the M41 is bad, because it's not. However, again, this isn't the, the greatest vehicle in history. Let's go ahead and just respawn. But, before I forget, this is not, like, an incredibly powerful cannon. I think the strength of this vehicle largely comes from the fact that it is a high penning vehicle, 300 millimeters of armor pen on a stabilized platform that moves quickly. I think that's going to be in the main strength. If that's what you like, this vehicle is definitely a great vehicle. I think up through, if this were to be a uh, 7.0 BR, you should be okay with it. It pretty much every match I've been in has been a complete up tier. This is one exception, or at least a partial up tier. This is the only down tier I've been in thus far. And thus far, I'm doing okay. Two kills, one assist, and a death. So, again, I like this vehicle. If this was, like, the sole reason to buy Battle Pass, I'm not entirely sure. The ILA for the uh, for the Russians is a very good vehicle. So, if you like both of those, yeah, great Battle Pass to get. This is a very good vehicle in and of itself. It's not, like, game-breaking. Like when the PT-57, 76, 50, whatever that was. When that first came out, how that was extremely powerful. This is not the same sort of thing. But again, it is a very nice vehicle. And I think it can really make a home. You know, if you like how the, uh, if you like how the M551 is, but you feel like it would benefit from a lower BR, or you want to stabilize M40, or, uh, yeah, M41, this is both this is great in both of those ways you know overall just a very effective vehicle i don't think you can really go wrong with it if you're a fan of light tanks and uh similar ish vehicles also look at this really awesome neutral steering very very quick um 
But overall, very good vehicle. If you don't mind the fact that it does limited-ish post-pen damage, then I'd say it's really good. Again, know your weak spots with this vehicle. Know where to shoot. Uh, if you shoot to the right of a turret, that's typically going to be the best spot to shoot, or like the right of the cannon if you're looking at the turret. That'll typically be about the best place to shoot against an enemy, because that's pretty typically going to be like a gunner shot. Oftentimes, it's also going to be an actual weak spot, which is very fun. But it looks like this match is pretty much over. We have ourselves two kills, one assist, and two base caps. Not too bad. Again, pretty typical match with this. One of the big issues that I'm finding with this vehicle, again, if I haven't already mentioned it, is the fact that uh, that that uh, vertical guidance really sucks on this. It's it's kind of mediocre, and it's much more sluggish than we need on a vehicle like this, but you can't really help it. It is what it is. So, that said, again, thanks so much for watching. This is a great vehicle, very good. You just need to know where the weak spots are. Ooh, can I get the kill? I hope so. Hopefully no one else is watching. And we got ourselves a kill, probably the final kill that I'm going to get in this match. So final tally, three kills, three assists, and two base caps. That I would say this is probably going to be a very typical match. You're going to have a few kills, a few assists, and probably a base cap or two with this vehicle. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is a great match, in my opinion. 2,000 points can't go wrong. So again, thank you all, and I'll see you all on the other side. And, uh, well... Take care, everyone.